glass. There are few objects in this universe that more clearly convey the idea of look, but don't touch. But hey, what if you want to touch something behind a pane of glass, but you don't want to completely shatter this crystalline structure? And what if you have one of these? Will this work, or will we have to dash the dreams of one particularly feisty feline femme fatale? <gasps> Holy alliteration, Batman. Now entering the facility. As you can see, I've been collecting assorted armaments and gadgetry for some time now, but one that has always caught my curiosity are Catwoman's glass-cutting gloves. They always seem so simple, so plausible. Miss Selina Kyle, cool name, Miss Kyle had gloves tipped with some material that would allow her to quickly and easily cut holes in window panes and tantalizing museum displays. But could it really be as simple as spin, tap, profit. Well, let's head back to the facility and find out. First of all, the physics of cutting glass are fairly straightforward. Glass as a material, mechanically speaking, is very brittle, meaning that it cannot bend or otherwise deform very much at all before those stresses overcome the strength of the material. Glass cutting takes advantage of this fact by forcing all of the forces to happen in a very specific place, inducing a fracture right where you want. Please have your ID visible at all times. Yeah, don't forget to have your ID out. We, we lost a lot of good people last year. This is your standard glass cutter. It's a relatively simple device, essentially unchanged since its first design in 1869. Nice, you have a sturdy handle here, and then you have a tiny, tiny wheel up at the top. This tiny wheel is actually the operative element here. What it does is scratch or score the glass where you want to cut it. Now, it doesn't look like much when you do this, but it's enough because even tiny deformities in a material as brittle as glass can direct direct applied forces and then cause micro fractures that instantaneously spread into macro fractures and cause a big fracture right where you want it and cut the glass. Now glass cutters can only do this, can scratch the glass because they are harder than the glass they are trying to cut. Now one way to classify the hardness, the relative hardness of this wheel, this material, is with Mohs Hardness Scale, first developed in 1812. It uses the hardnesses of 10 common materials and classifies them based on what can scratch something else. One is the softest, being talc, and 10 is the hardest, being diamond. Glass sits at a relative hardness of six or seven, and so all glass cutters have wheels that are harder than this, whether that be from hardness steel or tungsten carbide or diamond coating. My glass cutter here is hardened steel, but is it hard enough to cut like Catwoman? Humans have figured out a number of ways to make glass unnaturally, but what about getting glass straight from Mother Nature herself? The other day I was on a walk outside of the facility, staying two meters away from everyone, don't touch me, and I found this. This is not the pattern you see every day, right? There's a fractal-like pattern and some weird shiny material. What I believe we're looking at here is the sight of a direct lightning strike on the sidewalk. Electricity radiated out from the impact site and then created Lichtenberg figures. It heated up the concrete and the silica in the concrete to create this shiny material which is now effectively natural glass. You can actually find something similar when lightning strikes a beach. When a bolt of lightning hits the sand on the beach, it creates a tube of glass where the lightning bolt was transferred through, creating what's called fulgurite. And you can find that on a beach, but to find that on a walk through a city, that's just awesome. Stay back. The proper way to cut a pane of glass begins with safety. That's why I have eye protection, I have hand protection, I have a sheet laid out to catch any shards of glass, and it's why I'm not using tempered glass because that would more or less explode when I tried to cut it. And just for visibility's sake, I'm also using ring lights because it makes it look like I have two pupe pupes. Anyway, to cut a pane of glass, what I'm gonna do is lay this nice and flat on my surface. I'm then gonna take my glass cutter, I'm gonna have it 90 degrees from the pane of glass, the 
way it's laying down. And then I'm gonna press with a lot of pressure, which I see being a problem with my fingers layer, with a lot of pressure, and then I'm gonna score or scratch a line where I want all the forces to be focused. I'm then going to apply some pressure and break the glass along that scored mark. It's not really glass cutting as it is glass breaking. So I'm going to put this down. Now with some pressure, I'm going to score. When you hear the ripping sound, it means it's working. There we go. I'm gonna try this on a single score, just like that. And you can see, small line, and so now I'm going to press with a little bit of pressure and just like that, we cut some glass. Now that's a traditional glass cutter working like a glass cutter should, but what about a glass cutting glove? Here is my Catwoman glove analog. It is five glass cutters attached to a safety glove, again for safety. Aria helped me do this. She doesn't have hands, but she sure has needles. So many needles. Anyway, this is awesome, but I do see some potential problems right off the bat. The biggest being that I think it's harder than you think to make a circle and maintain that circle with your fingers under a lot of pressure with straight blades like this. When I'm pressing with the full force of my body weight, more or less, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make an actual circle, a single symmetrical score like we want. But I guess there's nothing left to do but stabilize this pane of glass like I would a museum display or a window on some sandbags and then uh, give it a go. Okay, so here we go. I have my stabilized pane of glass and to encourage myself to get through that pane of glass, I have here 99% pure copper, one pound of it. Ooh, and I'm Catwoman and I'm a thief and I want this copper. I'm gonna put it behind this museum pane of glass that's displaying an ingot of copper for some reason. All right, so here we go. Catwoman technique, test one with our glove, a lot of pressure, here we go. Okay, one, 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 one sec. You, you can't stop me, Batman. I'm getting that copper. Ooh. Okay, one more time. Give me that copper. Okay, so that's. Ow, that's not nearly as easy as it looks in most bat media. Uh, what do we do? I think we need to change our technique such that it gives the technique itself the biggest chance of working and removes the maybe human variable. And maybe just think to yourself, what would a materials scientist do? Glass is obviously transparent, but that depends on what you're looking for. Right now, your brain is looking for visible light to interpret as an image, and visible light passes right through this pane of glass. But what about invisible light? Now you're looking at me as I am in infrared light, the heat radiation that is coming from my body. Now let's check if that glass is so transparent. <laughs> it's not at all. In fact, glass is very opaque to IR radiation. This is no longer a window, it's a wall. The logical extension of this knowledge is, of course, if you're ever being hunted by the predator, find a greenhouse. Okay, so I have a new technique. My suspicion is that this glove is not really gonna work. It's not gonna be rigid enough to keep all of my fingers perfectly circular. I don't even think my fingers can really do that. So what I wanna do is try to prove Catwoman's technique. I'm gonna do what I did before to easily break the pane of glass. I'm going to, as best I can, score out a circle. And then, since I didn't even get a nice score last time, I didn't even have to tap it, I'm gonna tap it really hard after making my very best circle on this pane of glass. And if that doesn't work, we'll try something else. Uh, I'm gonna slap it with my multi-tool with a very fine point. We'll see if that works. So, here we go. Oh, Batman, oh, get a, give me that cop. There we go, already much better. And I'm pressing a lot harder than I was able to before. Ah, oh, man, I can't see any way of doing this just naturally with your hands. And remember, we're using very, very thin glass. We're not using something like skyscraper glass because these are just not made to cut that. And if Catwoman's cutting that, that I don't just, I, I just don't think that works. Okay, so I have a circle scored out just like how we scored out the lines that broke here. So in theory, this should work if it is to work at all. So now I'm going to stabilize and I'm gonna tap like Catwoman. Give me that cup of Batman. 
Hey, give me that copper. Huh. Okay. So something happened here. So as you can see, it broke along the line of the glass, but not all the way around. I wonder if there was a little bit better scoring that we could get an actual uh, punched out hole of glass. So I'm going to quickly reset and then I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Okay, so this is my final idea. I still have my stabilized pane of glass and what I'm gonna do to give this technique the best chance of working, again, I'm going to score out a circle as best I can and then I'm also going to score the inside of the circle with multiple lines, giving this more failure points such that when I tap on it like Catwoman, it will hopefully break along those lines and not anything else. So here we go. Give me that copper. Copper. Ugh, I'm pressing so hard. Okay. So now I'm going to score the additional lines. Okay, nothing to do but to try it. Hey, Batman, give me that copper. Oh, so close. So you can see that it did again break along the circle and along our lines, but didn't create just a nice punch out. So I have one more pane of glass. I'm gonna try this one more time before I alert the authorities. Okay, last chance for this to work. Let's try our technique again because it seemed like it had the most success out of everything that we tried so far. Okay, so here we go. Score circle. Let's try a larger one. Larger circle, I'm guessing has a better chance. Oh, I feel good about this one, Batman. Okay, now I'm also gonna score out our lines like we did before. And one more. Okay, I think if anything is going to work, it's going to be something like this. All right, Batman, give me that copper, you big silent type guy. Uh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> what? No way! Okay. I am fla <laughs> flabbergasted. <laughs> this before, okay, so I've tested this a number of times on and off camera and this has never worked like this. So, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is very carefully, I'm going to grab, if I wasn't doing with this, this with a glove, I would be sliced up. That's probably why Catwoman wears that suit. Oh, yes, the copper. <laughs> I was so ready to totally write this off, but I guess if you could perfectly score the glass in a circle as symmetrically as you could, and maybe you gave it a little bit something extra, and then you hit it very hard with a very fine point, it can, in theory, work. Will it work with a glove? I don't know. I think we kind of have to give Selena Kyle, cool name, the benefit of the doubt there because you have to push with a lot of force and have perfect coordination, but she's very, very coordinated in what she does as a thief and a supervillain, and I got my copper, so <laughs> I guess, I guess this is possible? But I'm keeping this glove. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy facility faculty for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. Today, especially, I want to shout out Gerardo Morion and Aria Foster. Hey, cool name. If you want to become a part of the facility, if you want to join our Patreon and our Discord, where right now literally hundreds of professors and visiting scholars and research assistants are talking with each other, setting up their own D&D &D games remotely in these weird times and giving me episode ideas, you can go to the link to the Patreon in the description below. And if you support just enough, you'll get your name on Ari here. And there's, <laughs> there's more and more of you each day. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dance this one out for a second. Hope nothing weird happens while I'm gone. We have a few moments now. What I was trying to tell you about before. Look behind the restricted door in the labs. Aria, were you saying something? Oh, well, never mind. Science videos today for a nerdier tomorrow. Thanks for watching.